Welcome to episode 6 of this flight report series. Today we are going to fly to Singapore on board the King of the Skies, the Airbus A380. On top we have one of the best seats in the house, a business class seat on the upper deck. So follow along on this inspiring journey. Welcome back to Frankfurt's Terminal 1 and my first ever A380 flight. It is late September and I arrived early despite the closure of the nearby autobahn. Ahead there are two weeks of traveling through Bangkok and Cambodia. But more on that in a future episode. Check-in at the designated business class check-in took just a few minutes. The personnel were friendly and professional. In contrary, sadly only a few security lanes were open so it took a good 20 to 30 minutes to get through. After that, I walked just a few minutes to get to my lounge, Air Canada's Maple Leaf Lounge. My first visit to this lounge was in 2018, ahead of my first Dreamliner flight, and I always enjoy coming back here. This lounge is furnished lovely with cream-colored chairs combined with wood elements. This makes for a comfortable atmosphere. Although, I found the floor a bit dirty for this lounge being reopened just a couple of months ago. Nonetheless, there is always a lavish selection of warm and cold food available, as well as cheese, fruits and snacks. In case you get thirsty, there is a huge selection of coffee, tea, water, beer and soft drinks. On top, you can choose between different red and white wines, all sorts of liquors and of course sparkling wine. Although, with what I knew would be a feast on board my 12 hour flight, I just enjoyed a pretzel and some yogurt, while enjoying the airplane movements outside. I remembered my utter excitement ahead of my first Dreamliner flight in July of 2018, and felt a similar sensation ahead of today's flight. A few minutes later, Qatar Airways' Boeing 777 left its parking position. It almost felt surreal that my trip with them was already 10 months away. And with my flight almost ready for boarding, I left for my gate and found my A380 already waiting for me. This aircraft arrived earlier from New York's JFK airport to continue now onwards to Changi. Although an earlier boarding was not possible, I could board ahead of other passengers to get a few shots of the untouched cabin. It's such a giant aircraft. Welcome aboard. Good morning. Good morning. Two minutes, two minutes this Airbus A380 upper deck is equipped with 6 first class suites and 78 business class seats. Between the first two sets of upper deck doors, you find the larger business class cabin. My seat for today's flight, 93A, is located in the smaller section of the cabin. As soon as you enter the aircraft, you can feel gigantic proportions of this aircraft. Everything fits together nicely. The colors and materials have been chosen wisely. The seat is 63.5 cm wide and of course reclines back 180 degrees. Although the seat is not equipped with a door, you could not wish for more privacy. And when you forget that this is an Airbus A380, just look at those gigantic wings. Next to your seat is a small but powerful reading light. The installed ambient light looks astonishing. Beneath is a USB charger and the headphone jack. Singapore Airlines also installed a small mirror. Next, there is the remote control for your IFE screen. 
Underneath the window, there is a storage compartment containing some water, today's menu, as well as the headphones and some slippers. The small cover hides a USB port as well as a wall charger. You find a bar to control all the adjustable features of your small kingdom as well as the button to summon your table. In front there's another compartment to store smaller items as well as a coat hook. Before I could finish the tour of my seat, the first beverage was served already. On both sides of your seat there are these retractable armrests, one of the features that really showed with how much detail they created a seat. The shelves of the seat are massive and create so much privacy without restricting the sense of space. Between the middle seats there are these visual protection screens. Other than that, the seats are the same as the window seats. Before we depart, let's change the footwear into something more comfortable. With the doors closed and everyone boarded, we left our gate and made our way to the runway. We departed Frankfurt in an eastern direction and headed southeast, climbing to a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. During the high energy phases of the flight, you can really feel the might of the A380. With her flight just a few minutes old, I wanted to check out the seat some more, but got interrupted by a flight attendant, who served my first champagne of the trip without another reminder by me. This amazed me, but instantly showed the level of service by Singapore Airlines. The champagne itself, of course, tasted outstandingly. A few minutes later, they already prepared the canapé, so I extended the massive tray table for my first chicken satay of this trip. Satay is always a good choice, but eating it on an A380 upper deck just feels surreal and teleports you directly to Asia. Of course, the flood attendants returned with some more champagne, which I enjoyed while looking out of the window. Please, let me tell you that the crew was not only kind enough to let me film on board, but I felt that they embraced it. I had several conversations about my YouTube channel, as well as my hobbies and my job. Let's review the in-flight entertainment system. The Chris World software features the latest blockbusters, as well as classics such as The Lion King, information about the flight, Singapore's online Chris shop and a huge selection of TV shows as well as an extensive amount of music. On top, you can enjoy podcasts and audiobooks. Of course, I have to show you the 3D map by Panasonic. As I mentioned in the previous review, the Voyager 3D is one of the best maps I've seen so far. The touchscreen of this 18-inch high-definition screen is quick and responsive. Even fast scrolling could not bother this IFE system. I mean, look how smooth it is. And as always, I had to search for some handsome music. Et voila. That's a crazy amount of film scores for an IFE system. I had a strong urge to try out the headphones before my lunch arrived, so I unpacked them. They looked and felt of high quality, and after listening to some of my favorite scores, I considered them as top notch. They fit well and produce a clean sound while blocking out a whole lot of interfering noise. Before your trip, you can pre-select your main course as well as the breakfast online. You can choose between the in-flight menu dishes or pick an exclusive book the cook meal created from chefs from all over the world for Singapore Airlines. 
The menu comes in a rather large booklet containing all four flights for this round trip between Singapore, New York and Frankfurt. Lunch consisted of three courses with several different main courses and desserts to choose from. Various delectable were available on request throughout the flight. Singapore's beverage menu was extensive and consisted of two champagnes as well as eight different wines. On top you may choose between eight cocktails, spirits, beer, non-alcoholic beverages and hot drinks like coffee or one of the 16 different varieties of tea. As I had pre-booked my meal online, I was asked if I was still happy with my order and shortly after, my table was prepared. I'm so happy that Singapore is back to preparing the tables instead of serving everything on one tray. For my meal, I chose the Australian Shiraz, which was generously poured in in front of me. And as I don't get to enjoy champagne every day, I also requested a refill for that one. The appetizer consisted of beef pastrami with melon tartare, an excellent combination of meat and fruit. A great start into a meal service. As a side dish, you can choose between several different types of warm bread. As my main course, I chose a delicious chicken and masaman curry from Book the Cook, which was served with vegetables and steamed rice. It tasted phenomenal. And with Formula One visiting Singapore in only a week time, I obviously had to watch the Beyond All Limits documentary. Dessert arrived and I chose the chocolate and raspberry cake, which had the consistency of a cold mousse, but nonetheless tasted outstanding. I was more than delighted of the quality and taste of the entire meal. Singapore did an outstanding job in selecting everything. They do not offer a dining on demand service like Qatar Airways, which I did not miss at all. My food was ready faster and I also found it a bit better compared to the Arab airline. Singapore Airlines does not distribute amenity kits. You may ask for what you need. For example, this lovely stuffed bear, which is available in two versions. The amenity kit is provided by Panhaligans and comes in a stylish small green pouch. Inside you find some hand lotion as well as a small bottle of face moisturizer and a lip balm stick. The provided earplugs are the same we use on the apron to cancel out engine noises. On top there are socks, slippers as well as sleeping masks available. Before going to sleep I had to try a Singapore sling, shaken for the first time in Singapore's Raffles Hotel by Nyang Tom Boon in 1915. I changed into my Qatar Airways pajamas and was almost too late to witness my seat being turned into a comfortable 63 centimeters wide and almost 2 meter long bed. Covered with a thick comforter and equipped with two pillows and a thick blanket, I almost fell asleep instantly, even though I wanted to stay awake for a bit longer. Somewhere over the Indian Ocean I woke up after a good amount of sleep to see the break of dawn through my window. It was one of the best sleeps I have had so far on an airplane. The noise level, already being low on the A380 upper deck, was completely cancelled by the earplugs. With the smell of fresh coffee coming out of the galley, I prepared my seat and myself for the upcoming breakfast service. Breakfast itself again came with an entire two-course menu, with warm bread as a side dish and of course fresh fruits. Like the lunch before, the breakfast was presented nicely. I chose a glass of water as well as a nice cup of cappuccino. The croissants were warm, fluffy and tasted fabulous. The same goes for the fruits, which were of course cold but not frozen. Vitamins and sugar always give me that boost to fully wake up. So I sat there eating, waking up and enjoying every moment in this high class cabin.
Shortly after I finished the fruit plate, my pre-selected pancakes arrived. They were served with figs, pistachios and covered in maple syrup. Warm, tasty, delicious. Again, Singapore Airlines have outdone themselves. This breakfast was diverse, presented lovely and tasted through and through amazing. Job well done. I even had to take another croissant because they were so tasty. And with the flight almost over, there is only one more thing to show you, the lavatory. There were four lavatories dedicated to business class. They are larger than on smaller aircrafts, but not huge. Next to the large mirror, there are amenities like toothbrushes or the amazing chic razors. Again, you find the same Panhaligon amenities as in the amenity kit. Hand lotion and face moisturizer, plus an older toilet. The iconic Singaporean orchid can also be found here. With decent underway, I returned to my seat and collected all of my items. This flight was an amazing experience from the moment I stepped on board this mighty A380. Singapore's service was through and through the best I have ever seen. The catering was again top class, starting with the satay as a canapé. Also, the beverages were chosen wisely and made great pairings. My Singapore sling was just okay, but you cannot expect a bartender class cocktail without a proper bar. The seat itself felt like a throne. Again, I did not miss a door, as this contributed to that open flare of the cabin. The materials were of high quality, although I already could see some worn out spots here and there. There was enough storage space and details such as the ambient lighting or the armrests showed with how much detail the seat was designed. Also, the seat can be converted into a very comfortable bed. I love the IFE system, which was intuitive and extensive in its functions. What I missed though was an outside camera. Last but not least, the entire crew was simply amazing. From my first step on board to the last farewell, they were on top of their game, friendly, and they always knew what you needed. This effort really stood out and turned this journey from super to superb, from amazing to incredible. So I would like to take this opportunity to say again, thank you Singapore Airlines for this great flight. The next episode will cover yet again a Singapore Airlines flight, this time from Bangkok to Singapore on their long-range configured Airbus A350. Until then, thank you for following along. Stay safe and always happy landings.